Welcome back to Newsday here on No Rise News. Now, Wednesday, October the 5th, is usually marked uh, all over the world as the World's Teachers' Day. Now, the World Teachers' Day identifies, celebrates, and motivates the accomplishment, contributions, and efforts of teachers around the world. This year's theme for World Teachers' Day is the transformation of education begins with teachers. It was on this day in 1966 that a special intergovernmental meeting accepted the UNESCO's recommendation on the status of teachers. The suggestion provides that teachers wit an outline of their obligation and right. Now, the historical recommendation tackles the subject of teachers, continuous education, as well as issues related to education, personnel, policies, and incentives. Now, join me to speak on the role of teachers, their welfare, incentives, work policies, and environment is Dr. Yemisi Adekpoju, our daily. Dr. Yemisi is an education consultant and a lead consultant at the Pursuit of Excellent Educational Hall. We want to say thank you very much for joining us here on this day. Thanks so much, Aaron. All right. First of all, as you say, congratulations on celebrating another World Teachers Day. Thank you so much. Um, let's start it off from the point. Would you say that teachers in 2022 have been able to rise to the occasion post COVID-19? Yes, thank you so much for that question. I think the COVID-19 pandemic actually exposed the lapses we have in our educational sector, especially mm. in Nigeria mm. or in Africa generally. And this has actually helped us to know that we have a lot of work to be done. A lot of our teachers were not tech savvy. Many of them did not know how to operate um, technological devices to enhance their learning um, methods and you know methodologies. And I can say that the COVID-19 was like a wake-up call to ensure that they go back to the basics, go back to the drawing board and to improve themselves in the area of learning, personal development and all. And I think that little by little, teachers are actually um, taking the strides, great strides to improving themselves in 2022. All right, some will say that the educational sector in Nigeria is in a dire strait. No thanks to all that is happening and the standoff between ASU and the federal government. All boiling down to remuneration. There's the old saying that the teacher's reward is in heaven. Mm. Talk to Rose about how important is it for teachers and instructors to be incentivized in the, in the Nigeria finance of today. Yes, thank you so much. Well, that old saying, yes, the reward of teachers is actually in heaven because teaching is actually a service. Well, if that's the case, why are some wishing to collect it right me. now? <laughs> <laughs> Allow me to learn. Okay. Teaching you... is actually service to God and humanity, okay. first of all. Mm. You know, teaching is not a profession. It's not just a profession. Right. It is a profession and also a ministry. Okay. So meaning that you are not just saying because you did not get a good job, so you are varying into teaching. Mm. You did not um, make the required jam cut off mark, so you are thereby pushed to the educational department. Teaching is something that should come from knowing your purpose as a teacher and then knowing your calling that, oh, this is what God has called me to, to help, to partner with God, to mold destinies. So when you are coming from the angle of, oh, teachers should, it should be incentivized. Yes, okay. they should because a happy teacher is also a happy student and then mm. a happy society. So I believe that teachers should be motivated, given better salaries, better work environment, motivated and all. And that is why for the last two months I have been um, launching a campaign, um, Project 500 Teachers, that um, made me to distribute my newly written book, Teaching a Service to God and Humanity, to 500 teachers for free and also you know calling on my partners to distribute the um food items to them just to encourage and they were so happy when we went to public schools private schools they were like nobody has ever remembered teachers most non-profit social enterprise come together to celebrate the children forgetting that there's somebody that is actually molding this destinies um so now you've just touched on some salient points do we have it all twisted in Nigeria when we look at the educational system? Should it be from 
the eyes of from the angle of the teacher to the students? Because you just mentioned that inferences are drawn from the students, first of all, which some say are the fulcrum to the teachers. But you're advocating that it should be the other way around, that the teachers should be molded in such a way that they can impact correctly to the students. Yes. But how do we begin to address this problem? Well, um, and that's what my social enterprise is um, tackling. Okay. I mean, it's about training, retraining our teachers. Many of them think that, the, you know, we have outdated curriculum, first of all. All right. And so the way our teachers are being trained in the first instance, is very, very, you know, deficit. We need to look at, we need to look forward. I mean, you can't say the curriculum of 1966 should, uh, uh, should be the same in 2022 to, to train a modern teacher, a modern day teacher. Don't forget that the children that we are giving birth to now, they are like, they, are, they call them Gen Z's or Alphas. Yes, and, yes, Gen and Z's. Then, so they are already 10 steps ahead of us. Yeah. So we need to catch up. Wow. We need to catch up. So many of, many of our teachers lack emotional intelligence, you know, um, code and, you know, conduct in the classroom, how to, how to you know, have strict learning, um, learning outcomes and learning um, objectives, you know, working together with the present realities of ni the Nigerian system. For example, I read political science. So you will not just teach me what Aristotle is saying, what Aristotle said, 360 BC or AD, you're going to bring it down to what is happening in the Nigerian economy or Nigerian system, political system, and explain it. For example, in those days, we used to have, dip when we're talking about diplomacy, you know, you, a, an ambassador will have to travel down to the other, you know, countries, receiving, receiving countries, um, apologies, to, to, dip, to, you know, relay a message. But now there's Twitter diplomacy, there's Facebook diplomacy, there's email diplomacy. The world is moving. Teachers need to move. All right, teachers need to move. Um, so um, how do teachers convey several of these shortcomings to the authorities? Because you've just mentioned remuneration. You've just mentioned the area of training and retraining of the teachers. You've mentioned key places like emotional intelligence, how to handle students properly, how to ensure that these teachers are up to date with the happenings of life. Usually, when teachers speak up, they get cut down, literally. Maybe get, maybe get suspended or maybe mm. just outright dismissal. How can a teacher of today find his or her voice to ensure that some of these demands, which are germane, mm -hmm. are being pressed home and they are being met to ensure that they create the enabling environment for teachers to thrive? And yes, thank you very much. For example, um, for someone like me, you know, many of us take personal development very seriously, okay. meaning that you have to develop yourself by yourself mm. and not wait for the government. Um, I believe that if the change we desire begins with us, it, it starts from our, the posture of our heart, the posture of our mindset. Do you have a possibility mindset, even as a teacher? What, are, what kind of vision do you have for the educational system? Are you just there just to mark time, wait for your paycheck and leave? Or do you want to create your brand? So many teachers nowadays have their brands on Facebook, Instagram, and many social um, media um, there to project all of these things. Right. And little by little, of course, you know, the world is global now. Little by little, I feel that our government, you know, uh, they are beginning to see reason with all of these things. And, I, and many of the private schools that we have now are now training their teachers, okay. ensuring that their teachers are trained. They call for, you know, facilitators, consultants like HI to come and train their teachers. But I feel that the government should also look at this aspect for the public schools. All right. Um, that's, it's not all doom and gloom, I should assume, and should presume. Talk to me. What's the best part of being a teacher? The best part of being a teacher is to see that that child that you molded as a, a toddler or a, a very young child becomes great and you see them doing great things. Mm -hmm. And then and that person said, oh, because thank you so much. I, I love it when my, my students, my mentees sent me messages, emails to say thank you, Dr. Yemisi, for being that teacher, for molding us, for teaching us not just politics or government, but teaching us how to go, how to pursue our career, how to fulfill purpose. And that's, that's the greatest wow. joy of a teacher. All right. Um, and looking at it, what do you expect to see, or where do you expect to see the teacher that will be relevant 
or the future? And do you think there will come a time whereby maybe robots or maybe technology will replace teachers? Mm. No. I think, I don't think the, the robots can replace a teacher. Yes, we have um, e-sessions, we have um, um, students listen to lectures, but there's a place of experience, there's a place of uh, com and getting in touch, inter interacting with your students. Sometimes mm. you can imagine, you can observe that your learner is not so happy, but the robots cannot pick that up. And you can decide that, oh, you, you, you came in with a course outline to teach for two hours, and then you just notice that the ambience in your class is not right for that course content. You can instant change it to something else, make it interactive, find out what is going on, you know, or go back to the previous lessons to ensure that they have, you know, understanding of what you've taught them previously. So we cannot, you know, the robot has no emotions, but teachers True. have emotions. So I don't think the robot can... Um, Replace. replace the teachers. Now, I've tried to not make this a very political discussion. That's why I've tried to just stay away from us. <laughs> but if you have a message to the government on the best thing they can do, not for teachers, but the students, indirectly the students, students and the teachers themselves, what will be that advice? Well, well, thank God that we are in this situation. We are in the, um, when the period of electioneering, campaigns and all. I, I'm just... I'm not going to talk to the government, I'm going to talk to the citizens to demand that this is what you want to see in the educational system. Anybody that is coming to you, vote for me, do this, demand... What do you think should be the standard? The demands should be that the schools should be... Um, the public schools should not now become something that people detest to go in and that it, it will become... It will be conducive for both the teachers and also the lecturers mm -hmm. and then the, the quality, the quality that we are known for is, is remained or we re, or we become better okay we become better and one of the things that the ASU people are you know are fighting for um, is for um i think for autonomy to be able to make decisions and also their remuneration policies and ensure that the policies that have been put in place does not affect them indirectly that's it. So I think government should also work with that. So when we're talking about government, we're talking about the people that will be in power. And then, I mean, a few months from now, power will change hands. So I think that the citizens should also put forward these demands to ensure that this person that would be our leader, future leader, future president, future governor, has education at the heart of their manifesto. Because if you want to see development in any area of a state, education is the bedrock for such development. All right. Um... Certainly, you're vast in the educational sector. You're a registrar in a polytechnic. I want to find out from you, what is the role that parents play in the lives of teachers? And what do you think, or where do you think parents do probably cross the line when dealing with a teacher? Ah, thank you so much. I, I think um, on my Instagram post, most of my messages are to the parents mm. because I feel that there are five or six stakeholders of education. We have the students, we have the parents, we have the teachers, we have the government, we have school leaders, we have school administrators, we have school owners. It. Okay. So I think that the, sometimes the parents actually feel that the teachers should be doing their job. And in the organogram of life, as you know, God has shown me, is that after God... The parents, not mm. the teachers. After the teacher, after the parents, are the teachers. So the, the only thing that the teacher attempts to do is to fill the lacuna that the parent has left behind in mm. the life of a child. Right. So meaning that the onus is on the parents to ensure that their children turn out well. So meaning that you don't heap the bulk of the work on the teachers. Don't expect your child to behave properly, you know, attitude-wise, character-wise, cleanliness, and expect that only the teachers should contribute. So I mean that, so in essence, I'm saying that parents should also teach, um, treat teachers with respect to ensure that these teachers are appreciated. I'm not saying go about bribing them. I'm not saying go about trying to lobby for your child to be the best in the class, which some parents actually do. And, you know, it's, it's time for parents to also know that, oh, these teachers, I mean, on, teach, on World Teacher Day, you could just write a note, thank you, teacher, you know, for what you're doing for my son or my daughter, to mm. encourage them to, oh, this teacher actually knows that I'm doing a great job in the life of their children. So parents should also know that some, 
parents go to schools to beat up teachers, to harass teachers. It's not done. You don't expect your child to turn out well when they are experiencing that side of you in the front of their teachers. And of course, you know when we're growing up, we fear our teachers. Like when your teachers say, my teacher said, you know, our teacher was the authority. Like even when one plus one is two and your teacher says one plus one is three, my teacher said it's three and that's it. So, that's it. All right. Okay, what to say? I would have loved to find out about the role of discipline. Okay, let's talk, okay, just before we go, talk to me about, let me just roll this into one. First of all, discipline. Where does the teacher draw the line with, with, in respect to disciplining the students? And how, how, what can be done to ensure that fraudulent teachers that probably leads students astray, how can they be weeded out of the system quickly? Okay, discipline. I mean, in Lagos State, for instance, we have a policy that says no beating. You can't beat a child. Do you think that is appropriate in the Nigeria we find ourselves? <sighs> well, different strokes with different folks. <laughs> okay. But I think that sometimes we are found that the, our generation beating helped. Yes. But they say the, spend the rush for the child. Yes, itself. but... I mean, now, you, when you beat a child, they say he's having mental health issues, he's depressed. All of these terms are new. Okay. And, of course, we, were, we felt bad, but we didn't akin it to being depressed. Oh. We, we were beating up our teachers. But I, for once, I'm, I appreciate my teachers beating me. Yes, because I was not so focused. I was so playful, and they needed to, you know, ensure that I was back on the right path. But, you know, a lot of parents frown at the fact that Teachers are being, and then some teachers also overdo it by leaving marks on the, you know. So there's a line. So, so now that we are no longer beating the children and we are not allowed to talk to them anyhow, also, mm. I believe that back to the parents, you need to do your own work wow. well. So then to say that um, unscrupulous teachers, how they need to be fished out, I, I know that our recruitment system, now the recruitment systems of teachers are now changing. Mm. They, don't, they no longer look at your certificates, what you have. They, you know, I've, I am privileged to you know, help schools to recruit, and then I'm on recruiting on boards. And I see that we no longer look at what you have. I mean, your first class, your very good awards. We look at, we psych you, emotional. We check your emotional intelligence, mm -hmm. your, e, your EQ. We check your, your comportment. We check your body language. We ask you questions. We ask you to, we give you an essay to write to find out your point of view. With all these methods, I think that you can actually find out which teacher is suitable for what. All right, what is it? Thank you very much, Dr. Yemisi, for your time. Thank you, Aaron. Here, I will wish you all the best. Thank you and so much. And the good work you're doing, distributing books to teachers to help probably raise the bar a little bit. Uh, continue the good work. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hope so to much. talk to you in the near future.